field trip today. It's a dollar a pound. Now we're headed back to the TAV kitchen. Make a sweet treat. Take, <laughs> of course. I don't like to use hyperbole or exaggerate things to an unreasonable degree just to prove a point. But I really feel like that happens every time. It does. <laughs> it does. I have nothing to say. Oh, Aria Rose. There's a kitten down there. Just so you see what's going on. <laughs> Aria. Aria Rose. Was so much fun. Yeah, I think it turned out really well. Persimmons are way in season and it's so cheap. We're cutting down on all the transportation costs, the stocking costs, the money that goes to the grocery store. We really wanted to make our own honey. I don't think there's anyone who's ever made persimmon honey because we found nothing no. online. We saw it done with other fruits but not persimmon which is kind of strange because when you bite into a persimmon it kind of has like a honey buttery very subtly sweet flavor. Yeah. So we thought oh, that kind of lends itself to making honey. As you saw in the video, we blended them with a little bit of water, got them as smooth as possible, and then we used this very creative method <laughs> called an Amazon gift bag. <laughs> Ideally, you have cheesecloth lying around or a nut bag. A nut bag. A nut milk bag, I should say. Yes. This, as you can see, is like a clear mesh. We kind of fashioned our own little filtration system. By the way, the rest of the persimmon is like a really cool smoothie or baby food. Mm. And it's really just to like smooth out the puree. Yeah. If you want to capture all of the uh, pulp all the little solid bits and remnants, pulp. and <laughs> that is persimmon pulp. This is the only pulp we ended up with, I think out of 10 or so persimmons we mm -hmm. used. Yeah. A little ball. So you want to get all that out of there. You want to leave yourself with just the persimmon juice. Are you you're rubbing persimmons on your face? It's a mask. <laughs> Look how cool. Yeah. It actually looks like a caramel too. Yeah. This is the texture of it. Mm-hmm. It's very, it's quite thick. It's still cooling too. Yeah, once it cools, it should get, it's already pretty thick. Yeah, it's really spreadable. Mm. Put it on toast. It looks you know. like the color of raw honey. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really tasty. Yeah, it's just sweetened, sugary, syrupy, spreadable something. I don't know why you need honey. To that point, the reason we wanted to make our own honey is because we had a request from one of our viewers mm -hmm. who asked us, to talk about honey. And to answer the question that's in the title of this video, when is honey vegan? Never. Never. It's never vegan. That's never uh, vegan. Because it's an animal product and you're taking it from an animal without asking them. I know they're bees, they're insects. Whoa, whoa. First of all, humans, then cows and pigs, then chickens, then fish. Now we're down to bees. You vegans are crazy. <laughs> you vegans are crazy. Can't handle this. You're taking the food of another animal and you're eating it when you don't have to. They like needed you know. to subsist, especially during the winter time. We watched a bunch of videos on YouTube about beekeeping. We wanted to learn how it was made beginning to end, 
not necessarily vegan videos. We did watch some of those, mm -hmm. but we also watched legit like beekeepers explaining how they make honey in their backyard. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, some of the process is pretty morbid. In order to get the semen from the male drones, they literally have to be smushed to death. Yeah. So that that's was, horrific. Yeah, that startled me when I saw it. I was, oh my gosh. Yeah. They just squeeze them until everything pops out and then they extract the semen and then they artificially inseminate the queen. Because I actually did not know this. Fun fact, the only male bees are drones. Mm -hmm. And guess what drones do? They inseminate the queen. That's, That's it. it. In fact, before the winter starts, they get yeah. thrown out of the hive. Yeah, all the women um, kick all the men out and then the women surround the queen and keep, keep her, her warm. warm throughout the winter. And then the next spring, Unfortunately, a lot of beekeepers, they order their queens uh, online and they get shipped to them in the mail. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, they're not treated very well because again, they're insects, right? So they don't matter, uh, but they do matter. And so in order to even start your own hive, you need to buy an animal and have it shipped to you. It's kind of best if you just like let nature do nature's thing because bees have been here for longer than we have. I like that we come in and we're like, oh, I know, yeah. I know how to make a beehive. <laughs> bees know how to make a beehive. You know how to make a bee exploitation box. Just let the bees be. <laughs> it's good. And the thing is about bees, they help pollinate. So we need bees to grow crops. So in fact, there's plenty of money that exchanges hands when people ship bees to different parts of the country to help pollinate the crops because we grow all the crops all year round all the time. In an ideal world, you would only eat what's in season. We want oranges and pineapples and persimmons and, and everything in season all the time. And to do that, you need bees. So there's already a commerce established to profit off of beekeeping. Good to keep bees around. We don't want the bees to die off, but we don't then also have to steal their honey. That's the extra step of trying exploitation. To, yeah, exactly. Trying to profit from another sentient being's hard work and lives. And if you simply plant flowers or plant crops, bees will find you. Yeah. And they'll make their own hive yeah. somewhere other than the wooden box that you built for them. They yeah. Can, they can do it. You don't need to do that, actually. They, they are perfectly capable of building their own home. It's almost mm -hmm. like if someone were to build a house for you and just plop you in there and say, this is where you live now. Yeah. Oh, and I'm gonna take like 35% of your stuff. It's fine though. You don't need all that stuff. Kind of sounds like the government. <laughs> Think about how hard they work. Bees are so intelligent and complex. They actually communicate the location of certain flowers or plants to their fellow bees by doing this little like bee wiggle dance. Von Frisch noticed that the bees returning from the same feeding source danced differently from bees that arrived from the other location. While both sets of bees perform the classic figure eight dance, the orientation of the dances is offset between the two groups. Bees returning from one feeder perform a rotated version of the dance done by the other bees. Incredibly, the angle of rotation precisely matches the angle between the feeding stations and the hive. They use vector calculus. At the end of the day, if you don't need the animal product, then it's... you don't need the animal product. And for those of you that don't know, as we like to call animal products by what they are, uh, so milk is cow breast milk, eggs are chicken periods, steak is animal flesh, and honey is bee, bee vomit. vomit. That's Several what it is. Several times regurgitated. I don't see how Bee vomit is a crucial part of a homo sapien diet. Beats me. Whoa! <laughs> it's like having backyard hens and that whole, yeah. it's kind of very parallel to that argument. Well, what if I raise my own chickens, my own bees, and I only take the eggs circumstantially? What else am I going to do with them? We've talked about that before. You let the chickens eat the eggs. Yes. Bees, it's very imperative that they feed themselves with this honey. And we've heard that people like to use honey to assuage their allergy symptoms because the theory is that bees collect pollen from the plants around you. And so if you eat the local bee honey, 
you're going to be getting a small amount of that pollen and you're going to develop an immunity to mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's not it really turns out how it works. <laughs> most people are allergic to the pollen that comes from trees and tall grasses. And bees go around grabbing pollen from flowers and fruit. We would say it's most likely a placebo effect. Also, uh, cutting out dairy helps with the allergies. Just say it. And there are a bunch of holistic remedies as well. That's like saying I only steal $5 a month from Brian to pay for my allergy medicine mm -hmm. because eh, he's not gonna miss five bucks. You're still taking something that's yeah. not yours, that you don't need, and according to the definition of veganism, uh, if it is possible and practicable for you to live without honey, which I would say it is, um, then you don't need to consume it. There's agave, there's maple syrup, there's persimmons, persimmon you can make honey out of apples and pineapple. Get creative. However, let me present you with a couple of scenarios. So say you have a friend over and she just baked a tray of cupcakes, especially for you, her vegan friend. Oh my gosh, you guys, they're my first vegan cupcakes ever and I think wow. they turned out really well. I'm so excited to share them with you. Oh, thank you, you made vegan cupcakes for yeah. me. That's, that's amazing, thank you so much. How did you veganize them? Okay, so almond milk, I used nice. almond milk, so there's no dairy. Um, no eggs, I learned how to make a flax egg. And then ginger, there's honey, there's flour, uh, vanilla extract. Yeah, I think that's about it. There's honey in this? Oh. Honey is not vegan. I do not eat honey. It's an animal product, okay? That is not vegan. Oh, these have honey in them? Oh, uh, yeah, honey's not vegan, so I'm just not gonna eat it. Oh. Yeah, oh. I mean, it's an animal product, so. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I mean. Shoot, yeah, honey. I mean, they're animals, obviously. Bees, right. So. Oh, that sucks. Sorry, yeah. guys. No, I mean, yeah, it's just, obviously, just do some Googling maybe next time. Oh, wow, I can't wait to try these. I am gonna, I'm gonna have a bite. Um, actually, honey, it, it does come from a bee, so it technically is an animal product. But I'm so happy that you made these for me. You don't have to. No, no, no. I, I didn't I want, know. I'm so no, sorry. No, I want to try them. Oh. Okay. All right. In I guess I could to... use agave next time. Yeah, there's agave. There's maple syrup. Uh, you can make honey out of fruit. Um, really? Yeah. In fact, I have a YouTube channel where we can teach you how to make it out of persimmon. Maybe the scenarios wouldn't play out exactly like that. It but, depends uh, on who you are and your relationship with the person. Yeah. And we exaggerated them Hopefully a little bit. Hopefully you get our point, yeah. which is don't be a d <laughs> if someone is trying to be nice and they're trying to respect your vegan lifestyle. Yeah, honey, much like palm oil, is not one of those things that people immediately make the connection. So, you know, like, don't shut down the conversation. It m makes people feel really, really bad. Positive reinforcement. So, yeah, that's our opinion of honey and whether or not it's vegan and the reason it's our opinion uh, is because it's the truth it's, it was actually established by the vegan society in the 40s mm -hmm. uh, to exclude honey yeah from your diet as well so if you are vegan and you're super into honey then try making a persimmon honey or go with agave or go with maple syrup or go with any other form of sweetener so guys let's jump into some vegan news so Grubhub released this Meatless Monday study. They actually recorded about 5% more meat substitutes are ordered on Mondays because of the Meatless Monday movement, and 19% more vegan takeout has been ordered. Jackfruit has also increased in popularity by 33%. That 5% of people are having their eyes opened to the world of vegan mock meats. Now, before you jump down our throats about how unhealthy mock meats are, they are a gateway into the vegan lifestyle. As they were so, for us. Exactly. If a person is used to eating hot dogs, here's a vegan hot dog. If you're used to eating hamburgers, here's a vegan hamburger. That's fine. And that's 5% of all Grubhub users. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Grubhub is primarily used by young people and veganism is more popular amongst the younger generation. So we are seeing an increase. Now it is related to Meatless Monday. I know, it's a trend, it's a hashtag. Oh my gosh. <laughs> veganism is more than a trend, guys. It is. We know it's about ethics. But this is a good thing for veganism. For people to order an animal product free meal just because it's hashtag Meatless Monday, that's fine. I imagine it's like a couple, like how did you meet? Oh, we met on Match.com. How did you become vegan? 
Meatless Mondays. Next up in the vegan news segment is select South Florida Starbucks locations will now be offering a vegan cupcake. <sighs> Now, they're doing this in partnership with a local vegan bakery. It's called Bunny Cakes. You can now go to some Starbucks and get vegan baked goods. How cool would it feel to be a small bakery yeah. and partner with Starbucks? You might be tempted to go to just a tiny little market, but it is good news overall because you have this mega corporation that is embracing having a vegan product in their store. And the only reason they're doing that is because they know that people will buy it. Yes. So this is on you guys for doing a great job at wanting to buy those vegan products because if you want to buy it, then the company's going to want to sell it. So guys, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button so we know that you like what we're doing. And hit the notification bell because you need to do that so you know when our new videos come out. And if you haven't already, subscribe. subscribe and we will bring you something new every week. Check out our Etsy store. Our new shirts are up. Pretty cool shirt, am I right? Yeah, I think so. You guys I get it? So. Like, you get it? You get it, right? <laughs> and thank you so much to our Patreon patrons. You guys make this channel happen. Bye! Bye. You're worth it to me. And don't be afraid of bees. It's a bee! Ah! It drives ah! me insane. Saying, if you start doing this, <laughs> how many times have we picked up bees that many. were struggling yes. and gave them a little bit of water? They happily set out on their way. I've never had a bee just come over to me and land and sting me like a vindictive bee. <laughs>